Uh, thank you, Steve, and I thank each and every one of you for uh, being here this, this evening, and it is indeed an honor and a pleasure to share this floor with two great constitutional conservatives uh, in Barry Laudermilk and Bob Barr. Both have been very dear friends for a very long period of time. I wish we could find a way to send them both to Washington. But thank you both for offering yourself up to the voters and for what you constitutionally believe in and practice in your day-to-day -day, uh, operations. I sincerely appreciate that. They are both very great speakers as well, so it's very difficult for someone like me to follow somebody <laughs> like them because I sincerely believe how you say what you say is very, very important. If you don't say what you say in a manner in which people can understand you, you can be misunderstood or misinterpreted. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Several weeks ago, my wife, Babe, was coming from Woodstock to Marietta along Highway 5, Canton Road, for those of you who live over in that area. And it was late in the afternoon, about 7 o'clock or so, the sun was going down, starting to get dark, and she saw up ahead that there was a woman walking along the side of the road. So she stopped and said, are you having problems? And the woman said, well, I ran out of gas, and I'm going down to the gas station to try to get some gas and get back home. And Babe said, well, get in. I'll take you down to the gas station. So the woman climbed in, and they were riding down Kent Highway, and they were talking back and forth, and it didn't take a long period of time for my wife, my wife to realize this was a full-blooded Cherokee Indian woman. So they began to talk about common issues, and it became pretty interesting conversation. And my wife said to her, are you going to call your husband once you get to the gas station to come and pick you up? And the woman said, no, I'm, I'm not married. And I don't want to be married. <laughs> the conversation continued on, back and forth, back and forth. And they had a quiet moment in the conversation. And the woman looked down between them on the front seat and said, what do you have in the bag? My wife said, oh, I just bought a dozen homemade chocolate chip cookies, and I got them for my husband. The woman looked down and looked back up and said, great trade. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say what you say is extremely important. And I want to talk about two issues this evening, but I want to lead up to it with a passionate belief that I have. And I know I'm talking to a lot of conservative folks, but all Republicans aren't conservative. A lot of them live right here in Cobb County. A lot of them hold public office. And I want to talk a little bit about that, because I passionately believe that 2014 that has been projected for quite some period of time is an opportunity for the American people to begin the process of taking back our country. Yeah. Yeah. But I also believe it's the opportunity I want to give to District 1 to begin the process of taking back our county because we are in the same shape as our country is in. And I could stand up here for 30 minutes and give you examples and reasons for that belief. I won't. I will only give you one. It's the fulcrum around which it's all happening. For those who weren't there or watched it on TV, the moment about two weeks ago that the Braves organization came before the Board of Commissioners for the final vote to vote on the contract, they pulled a political coup and filled up all of the speaking spots 
so that only the pro version could be heard. That's typical. That's not unusual. <coughs> that shouldn't have surprised anyone. What did surprise me, because I know what the rules are, the chairman could have said, the 12 spots are filled with proponents for the Braves proposal. As chairman, I am going to allow an equal number of people to speak in opposition, and we will stay here all night if it takes it to hear both sides. <clears throat> he didn't, nor did any one of the four district commissioners. And we got what we got. Those are four Republicans. They will all come before you and say, I'm a conservative Republican. I care about this county. I don't think so. But the process of change begins with one. You can't get to three if you can't count to one. That's why I'm running for district commission. It's to give the folks in district one the opportunity to begin the process of taking back our country. I won't sit there quiet, I promise you. <laughs> I may be the minority when I begin, but I'll begin the process. Because it's time we take back our county. Mm -hmm. both of which I'm very passionate about. First and foremost is public safety. I sincerely believe, as most conservatives do, that public safety is the number one priority of government at all levels, federal level, state level, local level. Most importantly, at the local level. You ride on the streets that must be protected. You live in your homes that must be protected. Your children go to the school bus, ride them to school. They must be protected. Public safety must always be government's number one responsibility. There was a point in time not too many years ago where in Cobb County we had the highest paid, best trained, most professional group of public safety officials in the state of Georgia. And it was acknowledged all across the state as this is how we should emulate our public safety department. That's not the case anymore. To give you an example of the loss of commitment of this board of commissioners to public safety, about a year or so ago, Cobb County lost 70 police officers for a variety of reasons. Not unusual. In the private sector and the public sector, attrition happens. Every year, people rotate in and out. Every year, you have to plan for that. You have to recruit for that. You have to understand that. You have to be committed to do that. Those 70 police officers were never replaced. The $4.3 million that were in the line items to pay for them was transferred into an undesignated contingency to be utilized by the Board of Commissioners for programs and projects they chose. And then this campaign started. And I started throwing rocks, then stones, then damn bombs. <laughs> the approach changed. Board of Commissioners voted and authorized a public safety director to hire 40 new police officers. And they thought I would shut up about it. Last time I looked, that's 30 short from two years ago. What are we going to do about the ones we're losing this year? There is no line item in this year's budget to address that item. And we continue to lose good, qualified people to other jurisdictions. There are two issues that are coming before you, one of which you're very familiar with. One probably not so much. 
It's going to have an equal impact on you. Let me address the Braves issue first. I'm not here to talk about whether it's a good deal, bad deal, or how we got there, or even where we're going. Not my focus. I won't be there. I will be there on January 1, not to address the Braves issue, but to address the public safety issue. Our former public safety director said to accommodate the Braves and what the Braves were bringing with them, it's more than just the stadium. Of the 80 acres they own, 15 acres of it is for the stadium. The balance is for mixed-use development. The concept is an Atlantic Station proposal in the heart of Cobb County. To address that issue, our former public safety director said, we need exclusively for that area 100 new police officers and firefighters to provide the public safety for those who are visiting us, those who live here and work here. If this board of commissioners was committed to your safety, in the negotiations with the Atlanta Braves organization, they would have demanded that the Braves donate 10 acres of their land to Cobb County for public safety facility. They would have demanded that the Atlanta Braves provide the $5 million necessary to build a new police precinct. They would have required that the Atlanta Braves provide the $3.5 million to build a new fire station. They didn't do any of those three things. If they had, that would have been the biggest benefit to the Atlanta Braves organization. To have a police precinct at their front door. It would have been the best thing for Cobb County to provide the public safety necessary in that area because I know and you know and they know that the bad guys follow the money. Who's going to protect them? Never happened because it was never even thought of. There is no commitment by Republicans to take care of this county. But there is another issue unfolding that is good for cops. I think ultimately the Braves are going to be good for cops. But one of the biggest issues few people talk about, let alone understand the impact, is at the other end of the county, North Cobb. With the merger of Kennesaw State University and Southern Tech, the projections are in three years, Kennesaw State University will be the largest university in the state of Georgia. That's the growth projection. If you meet with their people, and I have, you can see what their projections are based on. New football program starting up, nationally recognized baseball program, a high profile basketball program, big monies are being invested into Kennesaw State University. The impact on adjacent communities is huge. I've met with people from Pine Tree Country Club, for example. They are scared to death on one hand, hopeful on the other, that the university buys them out for their growth and expansion because they can't get into their homes in the evening or get out in the morning to go to work because all of the students are parked on both sides of the street and getting out is tough. The impact on infrastructure, roads, bridges, waters, there's no line item in there for that. Precinct 4, which is located in Kennesaw on Cobb Parkway, was called by these homeowners 
to come and move some cars or ticket the students because you can't get in and out of their house. They were parked on the front lawn. The response was, we can't do it now because we're short of officers. I hope to be there this afternoon. That was the response. Public safety is a secondary thought from the Board of Commission. Public safety is my number one priority to protect each and every one of you in this room, but all across this county. I know from a fact, from experience, when new people, new businesses want to move to Cobb County, they will ask the chairman two questions. What is the quality of your public safety? What's your crime rate? Number two, what's the quality of your education? You better have good answers for those. If you don't, there are alternatives all around. Quality of life is dramatically going to change. Whether it's for the good or the bad, it's going to be up to you. Because you have no idea how important you are and when I say you, I mean everyone in this room. I don't care where you live. In Cobb County, as I began by saying, 2014 is the time to take our country back and take our county back. I was expecting the primary to be filled with voters. We were expecting in our campaigns, all across the state of Georgia, from the governor, U.S. senator, multiple congressional seats, we were looking at 40-45% voter turnout on May 20th, and nobody was on vacation. Surely they're listening to all these candidates. They're going to show up and they're going to vote. In District 1, 14% showed up. 14,000 people out of 102,000. We just shook our heads. Then we realized, okay, on the 22nd of July, how many of those fools are going to show up? 5%, 5,000 people are going to determine who the next district commissioner is going to be in West Cobb. And it's going to have the impact on the congressional races, the Senate race, anybody running in the runoff, you got to which 5,000 are going to come vote? I got 102,000 to look at. You've got to begin to ask yourself as a candidate, my goodness sake, if they don't care, why do I care? Well, I care enough to take the chance that you come back to vote, or you wouldn't be here tonight. And take someone with you. And if you don't live in District 1, you got time to move. <laughs> <laughs> the final issue I want to get to, and I caught the tail end of what Ron was saying, you have an enormous opportunity to send a message. Two years ago, I ran for chairman. And Tim Lee was on one side, I was on the other. He was a chamber's candidate, I was. He was promoting the T-Sploss, I wasn't. They hammered me with everything they had. I lost the election but won the vote because 69% of people just like you said no to a 10-year tax increase for programs and projects you didn't want and didn't see a need for. This year, they're coming through the back door to get what they couldn't get the front door. Because the BRT is the same beginning, the same end. It begins in, in Fulton County and it terminates in Kennesaw. It's just a different proposal. It started out at $1.2 billion. And it got to that point because they spent $4.1 million for a multitude of consultants to tell them this is what you need to spend $1.2 billion on. First and foremost, from a professional perspective, and I've studied it thoroughly, it doesn't work. And I pointed out why. 
Shortly thereafter, they cut the program back. And they took out 12 intersection separations. If that's the case, the concept of BA doesn't work either. Doesn't eliminate traffic. There aren't enough people in that corridor who are going to ride the damn thing. <laughs> <clears throat> the numbers don't work. I know it. Ron knows it. And we're trying to inform, not educate, those who are going to go vote. It doesn't work. And along with this, I'm conflicted. Because they're bringing forward a SPLOS program over a six-year period of time. And I'm guessing, because I haven't seen the list yet, it hasn't been made public, there may be many good programs and projects in there that the voters in November will have the opportunity to say yes or no to. That's the way it should be. But if they put the BRT at the front of the list, I'll vote no, and I will beg every one of you to vote no, because Cobb County doesn't need that kind of a program. If we don't care enough to take care of the people we are elected to, and if we don't have any reservations at all to tax you infinitely limitless, because the SPLOST isn't the only one. The HOST, which is a homestead option sales tax, is coming. A water fee increase is coming. Property tax revenues are coming. Why do I know that? The $400 million we are obligated to give to the Atlanta Braves. For a 30 year period of time, we'll spend $700 million to pay it back. That's gonna cost us approximately $20 million a year. The Board of Commissioners have created three new revenue sources. Those revenue sources add up to $9 million a year. They are $12 million short of being able to make their yearly payment. Where do you think that money's going to come? Us. Four taxes are coming. Republicans. If you want to take back our country, pick one of these fine gentlemen because they'll begin the process in the 11th district. I can promise you that. If you want to take back your county, you have a choice. My opponent, who is for everything I'm against and funded by the Chamber of Commerce, or me, who will fight everything that's been done to this day and begin the process of refocusing on what conservative constitutional beliefs define we need and we should, the choice is clear. But the choice is yours. You have got to go and vote and take someone with you. Because if you don't, who cares?